Hi, my name is Heather Smith. I'm from Western Reserve Public Media in Kent, and today I want to tell you a little bit about invention literacy and makey makey. So let's talk a little bit about invention literacy in the classroom. Our world wants go-getters. It wants designers, creators, and dreamers. It wants builders and tinkers. It wants innovators who will ask, why not? So when you're doing invention literacy, a really easy way to implement it in your classroom is to develop a maker space. Okay, maker spaces are spaces where you make things. You got to be creative. It could be cardboard and duct tape. It could be that simple. And then you can add in pieces as you go. So let's look at how it will work to bring the community into the school and make connections. So we have our school over here. You have your teachers, students, families, and your mentors. In the outside world, in the community, you have your businesses, art, government, nonprofit agencies. When you bring these people in, they can help with your makerspace. They don't necessarily need to be experts to help you get started. Well, what it's about is making connections and working together and learning all those skills you used uh, later in life to be successful when we do teamwork and we're creating solutions to solve real world problems. It's a great thing. So what happens when students embrace design thinking? They grow more empathetic. They become system thinkers. They become hackers and rebels. They become explorers. You become very curious. You have lots of questions. You want to discover things. You want to find answers. They become wildly and unabashedly different. They are ready for the creative economy. They learn to take creative risks. They make connections between ideas. They learn to think divergently, think outside of the box. And they become problem solvers. So let's look at four truths. Every child is a maker. And when they're really young, sometimes they make a mess. Every child should have access to creative projects. Every subject should have a maker space. And teachers are the architects that make that happen. So your maker space isn't necessarily going to be tied to any standards, any specific standards. But the way you develop your makerspace and the projects that you do with it, those are tied to all your standards. So we have different kinds of projects here. You have long-term, short-term, loosely structured, and tightly structured. Your long-term, loosely structured would be Genius Hour projects. We talked a little bit about that in Thrively in their projects folder. You can do loosely structured short term, which would be rapid prototyping and divergent thinking challenges. Long term, tightly structured, you can do project based learning and design thinking. And then tightly structured short term would be maker challenges. So when you're managing a maker space, first you want to talk to your students ahead of time about expectations for the task or the maker space. You want to co-construct your guidelines and procedures with students. You want to create rules that everybody is invested in. If your students are helping create the rules, they're going to make sure that their peers follow the rules that they helped create. Build in moments of silence. And this is to keep the classroom focused and kind of bring you back to center. And you can ask them during that silent time to be reflecting on things that they've been doing. All right, so if you want to start your own makerspace, start with a single project and only the materials that you need for it. So if you want to make a bag tag and you need duct tape, rubber bands, and markers, there you go. That's a very simple makerspace to get started with. After a few projects, you will know what materials work best. And makerspaces are constantly evolving, so you're not going to have the same stuff in it, and it will change over time. And it might not necessarily be what your neighbor 
or another teacher you know has in their makerspace. It's allowed to be, it's allowed to change. So I'm going to show you how to create a makerspace in one week. What I like about the maker movement is it encourages a growth mindset which tolerates risk and failure and maybe even encourages it. For innovation to flourish, a carefully crafted environment built on empowerment and risk-taking must be established. So something you could use to um, students to take risks is a flaffle ticket. It's a failure raffle. You put your name on it. When I tried to build a robot, it didn't go as planned. This is what went wrong. And you explain what went wrong. And next time, this is what I'm going to try. So it just helps the student get back on the bike once they've wrecked, and you just keep trying. It makes a failing a lot of fun. So start with why. You always want to start with why. Okay, who will you contact? Who are your stakeholders? Should be your students. What kind of maker space is it? Is it a shareable space, self-contained, on a cart, or in the library? Is it an elective class? So you're going to need to plan your model of what you want to do. If you're interested in looking up different kinds of challenges that are in the world, you can seek out 80,000 hours. It's a pretty cool site that tells you about 80,000 hours in your future career. All right, so if you're wanting to talk to your students about um, what their interests and opinions are, in my early video, I talked about Thrively and getting to know your students that way. That's a great tool to really get to know your students, and it's mentioned down here. Day two, explore the pedagogy. What can you do and not do in your space? Maker challenges, short challenges, whatever you do, how does it connect to the standards? So while the makerspace is not aligned to the standards, the things you have the students doing in them will be connected to the standards. Day three, create a solid supply list. You may not know that right now but you can create, uh, create a list and get started. So some ideas that we have would be uh, a take apart breaker space. So this would be like old computers, old TVs, things that the students could take apart. Maybe you give them a challenge to break apart something old and create something new with it. And then they have to describe the process they went through, be a video or a paper they write, you let them have a choice. You could have a Lego table, a Makey Makey station, 3D design and printing, a little bits bar. There's so many different ideas you can do in different spaces. So day four, you want to determine your organizational model. Are they going to be standing, sitting? Is there going to be Legos, a green screen, station rotation? How will you design the space? And we want to make sure that it's student-centered. Get input from your students. Empower them to help you do this. This is not something you have to do alone. Day five, you're going to design your layout. So where are things going to be? Is it a pop-up maker space? Is it on a cart? Here's a little idea. They have a Lego table. They have your green screen, blue screen. You have uh, some different projects that are in process. You have a lily pad, a 3D printer, um, a little bits bar. You have a breaker space, so there's some tools. You have your robotics with dash and dot, maybe your camera. Whatever you have, you can add that into your maker space. It doesn't have to be all robotics. Day six, you're going to create a classroom management plan. Make sure that you let the students help create their space. This will help get their buy-in and help them police the station while you are doing maybe other things. Say So you want safety issues. How are they going to handle wiring, cutting tools, safety procedures? You're going to teach the procedures and expectations before you are actually in the situation. So practice before you do the event. And finally, you're going to put it all together. You're going to pretend you're a student and make something. What will the students experience? And I have a couple samples up here. Um, this one looks really pretty. I don't know how well it will stay put together. I don't even think any kids have used this one. It doesn't look like anybody's used it. It looks brand new. It looks very pretty. 
This one is practical. You have your boxes, they're organized, it's on a cart, you can share it with your neighbor. This one, I like this one as well. It looks a little bit more uh, well put together. Moving on, don't make these mistakes. Don't spend too much time reading, thinking, studying, and never actually doing the work. Don't wait to have the best supplies. And don't do it alone. Get started now. Have your kids help. That's all I have for this. And the next part coming up is going to be Makey Makey. Hi, let's talk a little bit about this Makey Makey device. This is what the Makey Makey looks like. So you'll plug it in. There's a little place you plug it in on the back here. You can't see it, but it'd be about right here. There's a little cord and you plug that into your computer in the USB spot. When you do that, your computer thinks it's now has control of your computer. You don't need to download anything, but it'll control the up, down, left, right arrow keys, your space bar, your click, and then you have the earth. So the trick is to connect the things to earth okay so let me show you an example of what I mean because you're going to make a complete circuit all right so this is the you this is the earth right here and you can see they're they're holding the earth okay with the other hand they're touching the banana so their body is completing the circuit okay so the red cord right here that's your USB cord it's going to go from the makey makey into your computer your alligator clip, they have one on the earth, okay, so she's touching that, and the other one is on the space button, so whenever you touch the fruit, whatever's on your computer, the space bar will be hitting, so maybe it's making it a space, um, whatever the function is on that screen. That's just the basic of getting started. All right. So there's a couple, three things to remember with the Makey Makey. It is an external keyboard. On the back of the Makey Makey, there are extra places that you can plug things into along here. And you can have different codes that go with those. So you can make it a little bit more complex. But in the front of it, it's just the basic, the earth, your arrow keys, your space, and your click. All right, and then finally, you're just creating a circuit. So if your circuit is broken, the function won't work. All right, so how do I get my kids thinking about uh, maker spaces and makey makey? I normally like to start with this game. It's called Disruptus. Okay, so basically you have a die, and it will tell you what to do. You have two cards that you pick and you have a timer. So you have one minute to come up with like a new creation or to disrupt something. So for example, my two cards might be a garbage bin and some diving equipment here. So how would I reinvent these? Or can I use pieces and parts from here or here to create something new? Maybe I'm gonna go dumpster diving. <laughs> This is just a video that explains it, but I'm not playing that right now. All right. So one of the great features that you can use with Ma uh, Makey Makey is Scratch. And you'll go in there and you can do some coding. And it doesn't even have to be really hard coding to do. But you can create games. You can create posters. And I actually created something I would like to show you. So my very first Makey Makey project, I wanted to make an interactive poster, and it was February, so I wanted to do Black History Month, and I wanted to find things to put on my poster that maybe other people don't know about. So it didn't include Martin Luther King. I tried to do some different things, and 
I will show you a clip of what my radio does with the Makey Makey. Okay, so let me show you a little bit of the coding that went into creating the interactive poster. All right, so I'm in Scratch. I opened up my projects, and this is my coding for my whole project. It's pretty simple. I use the event button here, and it's when... I use this one here when the space is pressed but what you can what you do just click on it and you can pick a different arrow so I used when the up arrow is pressed then lift every voice will sing and I uploaded this from YouTube so you just use like an mp3 converter put your YouTube link in and you can upload the sounds in here so you go to your sounds tab and you should be able to upload in here. You go to new sound and then you can upload it from there. How you get into uh, uploading your own voice and sounds that you want for your Makey Makey project. You can make it interactive and you can make it a game. I just didn't go that route. And so this is really how simple it is to code and make an interactive poster with the Makey Makey. Okay, so I just want to show you one more site. This is makeymakey.com. And this is a great place to get started if you want to use Makey Makey. So you can come here and get a lot of ideas and see projects that have already been made. Okay. I'm just going to scroll down here. Computer's going a little slow today. So why Makey Makey? You can go and you can research all sorts of things in here. You can go and learn about them. You can see different projects. So here's the Makey Makey Labs. So you can use cars. They have Legos. They're building. They have sound tubes they're making, a box accordion, a car track. There's so many more. Just go to YouTube and Google Makey Makey projects and you will find so many. Um, that's all I have for you today with Invention Literacy and the Makey Makey. If you have any questions about any of this, please reach out to me at hsmith at westernreservepublicmedia.org and I will help you in any way that I can. Have a great day.